All right, so thanks for being here today. Really appreciate you coming out. We are uh, looking forward to uh, getting the season started Friday night in the woodshed. Really appreciate our fans, you know, our students. Um, guys are preparing hard. We had a Tuesday type practice today. So we're well into our preparation uh, for Western. And, uh, so with that, I'll open it up for questions. I was wondering where you're at with the uh, kicker situation with adding Ben and kind of what you think of those guys in that room overall heading into the opener. Yeah, they did a good job today at the end of practice, so um, we'll make a decision at some point, and, but I feel good about it. Uh, you know, you guys had a, you said you were going to do kind of a, a little walkthrough on Friday. Did that, did you end up doing that kind of a, like a mock game sort of? environment and what what do, what do the guys get from that when they haven't been out there maybe for a year to try and replicate everything in their mind again yeah we had a fast friday type practice so we we did go fast and then and then we shifted to the mock, mock game it was just basically going through our our uh, kind of our routine you know when we get to the stadium and and then how we go out for warm-ups and how do we uh, how do we flex and where we go in our uh, position groups for uh, you know pre-game warm-up and things like that you know, how we, uh, how we uh, handle like the one-on-one, the seven-on-seven, the team periods pregame, and then how we, you know, come out, you know, of the tunnel. And uh, then we did some scenarios, some, you know, situational things, just talking through offense, defense, special teams, you know, how we uh, come out for halftime and things like that. I know, I know we've joked about it with Peyton a little bit, but was there any, is there anything to that about him sort of being able to help you guys a little bit, just with a first year coordinator, obviously his dad, uh, is that something where him and Scotty sit down in the summer and have lunch or something, or is he helping you guys out in defensive meetings, or uh, yeah, defensive meetings or anything like that this week at all? No. We're here. Mel, I'm just, uh, obviously this is now the, the third year. I feel like every year there's a, a little different kind of feeling. The first year was, obviously a little bit different and going into the second year. No one really knew much, but now the expectations feel like they've been ramped up so much after the way last year went. Do you, do you sense a different feel from these guys? Like there's, you know what I mean? There's, there's not an unknown. Now they know, hey, we've gotten to this point and, and now we expect to be at a certain point. Do you sense that from them going into From our players? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's really, it's the, the, the expectations from the outside have really uh, ramped up, so to speak. And, uh, you know, like we're ranked going into the season um, and there's an expectation for us, you know, to be a, to be a good football team and, and things like that and to be able to win games where, you know, a year ago we weren't ranked. We were picked to be one of the worst, you know, five teams in the country and things like that. So it's really the, you know, the external expectations, I think, you know, have, have uh, shifted. Well, it's, it's really, you know, it, we, have, we have standards and we have, you know, expectations for ourselves and they're high and that hasn't changed. Now that you're heading into game week, I, where do you see the biggest growth from Peyton? Really leadership. Really uh, not just leading by example, but being more vocal with his teammates, not just on the offense, but, you know, the defense as well. He's, uh, he's really grown in that regard, and I'm really proud of him. Wondering the importance of winning at home. I mean, yesterday, I think you guys put on your Twitter page something along the lines of how you guys didn't lose a game last year in the woodshed. And so how much emphasis you're putting on that this week as you head into this game against Western? Yeah, winning at home is important. We appreciate our fans. You know, our, our home, uh, the woodshed should be, a, should be an advantage for us, and it is. Um, and it's important that, uh, that we play well at home. And so we were undefeated at home a year ago. That was a goal of ours, you know, to protect our home. And that's always going to be the goal for us is to play well at home and to, and to, uh, and to win at home every, every game that we play at home. Mel, who's returning kickoffs and punts for you? And... Do you have any reservations at all about using Jaden there with all the things he has to do on offense? Yep, we'll just have to see. We got quite a few guys that can do it. 
but we don't have any reservations about putting guys back there. You know, you know the, we're going to put the best players back there to get the, the most production and uh, to give us the best chance to, to have a chance to, to, you know, to get the job done. After last year, you came in with a lot of different changes, a lot of different, I guess, players, you know, things that people from the outside didn't see. What did you learn from that? Is, do you have to go into a game, one in particular, kind of keeping things quiet and keeping things close to the vest for changes you make, for whatever other reason there might be injuries or growth? I mean, do you try and do you consciously think about that this week? You know, I'm not letting too much out. Well, I mean, we, we don't want, you know, we don't want to help our opponents. And, uh, you know, so, you know, we, I try to answer the question as best that I can, but, you know, I, I'm always going to do what's best for the green and white. Uh, Mel, a year ago around this time, yeah, I don't think you told us directly, but you told your team, you know, coming out of camp, going into that Northwestern game, that something along the lines of there's, there's championship talent here, maybe not championship depth. It, more of the story, it seemed like you sort of had a very strong feel for what that team was, and then we, we saw what happened. I'm just wondering, a year later, coming out of camp, going into game one, do you have a, a good grasp of maybe what this team is all about or what their capabilities are and whatnot, similar to that a year ago? Yeah, you know, right now we're just focused on stacking days. Again, we've already stated what our goals are for the season, and, we, you know, we're just stacking days. I mean, we have a process that we go through uh, throughout the week, um, and uh, so it was like it was a Tuesday-type practice for us. Well, which was full pads and it was a physical practice and and uh, you know we competed we did mostly scout work but we did have some we did have a couple good on good periods which uh, in the, we're going to go and grade the film but you know it's really right now so we have one game you know we have a one game focus we have one game on our schedule and that's and we're working to stack days in preparation that we can go out there and put our best foot forward and have a chance to win the football game. Well, not to tip anyone off, but you had a meal ticket in the backfield last year in Walker. Do you do you anticipate one of these two guys, Berger or Broussard, being the lead back, or are you comfortable with running back by committee, or where does that stand? We'll just have to see. I mean, it's going to take all of us. It's going to take the offensive line, um, the tight ends, the runners, you know, the wide receivers blocking. You know, we have a good scheme. We're going to have to – you know, uh, Peyton's going to have to make sure we get in and out of, you know, the, the right plays and things like that. And we're going to have to play complimentary football. You know, offense and defense and special teams working, working together. But we have to be able to run the ball on our terms and have balance on offense. I kind of back to what I was asking a little bit about when it comes to a week one game plan when there is and not just from you but obviously Western has a new coordinator and there are things that aren't there how do you as a coach approach that when you know you you kind of alluded to it a little bit last week that it's a rules game but when you get into game week what does that rules game mean well you know we're gonna we're gonna you know we have to practice some plays you know that, that you know we think they may run or that they have shown and you know, you got, you know, a couple of different programs that, you know, we're, you know, we've been studying. And so, you know, we have to, you know, pick and choose, um, you know, which plays we're going to run and, and things like that, that, you know, will, you know, maybe resemble what we might see in the game, but we don't know for sure what we're going to see. Do you do a lot of scouting on, on North Central? I mean, do you have to do that? With yes, you have to do that. Yep. Yep. You have to do that. And then, you know, Western and, 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 uh, you have to go back years, you know, things like that, to uh, to try to get the best picture, and then then you have to decide. So here are the plays we're going to present to the players, you know, to, to run and practice with our scout teams and things like that. But you have to, you know, you have to coach in concepts, you know, so because um, we don't know what we're going to see, um, you know, from from them, you know, for sure we don't we don't know. We're going to have to be able to adjust, you know and adapt during the game and do a really good job, you know, uh, identifying what we're seeing, have really good communication on the staff, you know, from the box, you know, and then communicate with the players and be able to make adjustments, uh, you know, to what we see out there. But, you know, when you teach in, in concepts, uh, you know, the players should be able to unwind anything that they see out there and apply the rule like 
for example, if it's a coverage, you know, um, maybe there's a look that a play that we haven't seen or uh, before. Um, it might be something, maybe they got it from another school and it worked well and they, they might have got it from an NFL team, you know. And so, uh, so within that coverage, you know, the cover says if this, then you do this. You know, I mean, there's five eligibles out there and things like that. You got two by two, three by one, you know, empty, you know, two back, you know, one back, you know, all those deals. So, I mean, uh, so they, they, those, those plays fit into some type of category. And uh, then you apply the rule that you have for that coverage or that front or that, that, that blitz, that pressure. You know, you apply the rule to that category of plays, and, and that's what makes it a rules game. Mel, how would you best describe the buildup to this week and to Friday in terms of the energy in the building right now and conversations that players might be having? I mean, we know the goals, you've stated the goals, but just maybe some more little things that people are talking about inside the building right now. Inside the building, yeah. So um, that's a great question. So we're, we're, building, we're building our fight every day. You know, um, and when I talk about stacking, stacking days, you know, you know, we have a Monday type of practice, we have a Tuesday type practice, then we have a Wednesday type practice, then we have a, a, a like a no sweat Thursday, then we have a, fa a fast Friday type practice, then we play. You know, so, uh, you know, every day there's a different point of emphasis. Maybe you're going first and second down, and then you move into maybe the third down or, you know, red zone short yardage, you know, by day, and then you try to put it all together, you know, at the end. And so, uh, you know, there's guys watching extra film, like on their own, uh, they're watching it with each other, being very intentional with the focus on what are they, what are they studying, and maybe they're studying the the, the players, uh, the opponents like mannerisms, uh, and you know really studying in great detail, and and so the players are talking about that amongst themselves, you know, and so, uh, and 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 I mean like, so, you know, holding each other accountable, is a big deal, like uh, during during the week in preparation, like. You know, making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to do in preparation for the game. You know, you hold yourself accountable, you hold your teammates accountable, you know, and, and making sure that, you know, we're, we're keeping the train on the tracks and we're staying focused on the, on the task at hand like we have one game. So you got, you know, older guys, more veteran guys who, who, who get it and understand, hey, listen, we've got one game. Yeah, we're playing at home. It's the, it's the first game. It's the first game of the season. But listen, it's this Tuesday, so we got to focus on Tuesday. You know, be where your feet are. You know, we're, we're not going to look too far ahead. I mean, we know when the game is. We know the, the, the date, the, the kickoff time. So we know that. But what do we have to get done today? And that includes rest and recovery. I mean, that uh, you know, includes like nutrition, treatment, you know, film study, things like that. Uh, you know, and guys, you know, keeping each other focused on, on, the ta on the task at hand. And that's really what we're talking about. I mean, school starts tomorrow. And so, you know, we're going to have to have, you know, a, a higher level of focus because that's another variable and you always want to eliminate distractions. But we practice in the morning. So, you know, sh we should be able to, you know, mitigate some of those distractions uh, with that. But it's, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a collective effort. You know, everyone has a role to play. In, in preparation, you know, you got the scout team guys, uh, you know, you got the first and second team, you got guys that are going back and forth. Uh, and so, uh, you know, whatever that role is, you got to do your job and practice it. If you're on a scout team, you got to give us a great look. You know, if you're on the first and second team, you know, make sure you study the opponent, make sure the scout team is, is giving you the, the right look. You know, if the guy's not running the route properly, you got to tell the guy that's not how they run it. That's not what they've seen on, on that's not what they've shown on tape. You got to run it like this, you know, so, uh, it's the, this intensity uh, of, of the preparation is really what the key to the deal is. Everything else is just noise, you know, for us. Everything else is just, is just noise. It's, it's uh, you know, again, we appreciate our, our fans. We appreciate our student section. We like, you know, obviously guys are looking forward to playing because we've been practicing against each other this whole time, you know, but, but we can't get ahead of ourselves um, because we have to be ready to play a great football game, 60 minutes, you know, one play at a time, six seconds of play, and staying neutral and always playing the next play, playing the next play, the next play, and we have to practice that way. So everything we're talking about in the building is, are those things. 
we're not talking about anything else because there's nothing else, there's, there, there's nothing else that we can control. The only, th only thing we can control is our behavior, you know, how we, how we, how we behave, our actions on a day-to-day -day basis, which are a result of the choices and decisions that we make, and those things create the outcomes. You know, and so that's, that's the chatter, that's the talk. All, this, all the other stuff is really, is just really noise for us right now. Mel, Mel is, this a, is this week where Peyton is in a kind of a unique position of his dad being over there, is it a, a challenge for him at all? Or is he the kind of guy that's been around enough and is focused enough where maybe that doesn't affect him at all this week, do you think? I talked to him about it yesterday. We had a long talk about it and, and other things. And so, you know, it's, I don't think he's been in this situation before, so you know he he, he says that it's that, you know just it's it's not a it's not a distraction for him, you know, um, and so but I mean it's, it's you know this it's a human performance business, you know, so that that's his dad, right? So you know so we have to you know address it, you know, and and, and talk about it, and then you know you know how are we going to handle it, you know, and we and we talk about that in, in detail. We're going to continue to talk about that just like we would anything else, you know. Um, you know, because you, and I believe, you know, discipline is 85% anticipation, you know, and discipline is doing what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, the way you're supposed to do it, and understand why it's important to do it that way. So for, for him to have a disciplined football game and to prepare with discipline, you know, we, we have to anticipate these things and say, okay, well, here, here are some of the uh, scenarios, here are some, some situations, here are some of the feelings that you might have, like, so, so how are we going to handle those things? Okay, and what's our process for that? And how are we going to think? Mental conditioning. So we 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 address that, and just and we're addressing other things with guys as well. You know, there's some guys. It's their first game. You know, in the woodshed. You know, so we, we need to address that. Hey Mel, uh, right up here. I was wondering, you know, you're about 20 practices or so into the fall. What you thought or what you've seen from the, the offensive line, particularly the younger guys that you know were haven't played in the game, and, and they're obviously going to have to be part of the, the mix this year. Yeah, so I mean, Coach Cap is relentlessly and ruthlessly coaching those guys. You know, so I see I see improvement from those guys. I see them developing, you know, and you know, and 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 being able to play uh, with the conditioning that we need to have as a base, so we can so we can, you know, uh, compete hard and 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 for 60 minutes. You know, and 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 you know, know what to do, and play with the edge that we need. Um, you know, and, and strain, you know, move people in the run game, you know, sustain, you know, and, and get the job done in, in the pass game and, and, and play hard. You know, so I, I see guys, you know, developing and being, and being coached really hard and with, you know, very high standards. And, you know, for our whole program, you know, we talk about it all the time. I mean, it's, it's standards over feelings. You know, standard over feelings, and like you know, it, it's so when we're when we're in the meeting room and we're on the field, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. There's a standard of performance, and we don't care how you feel. You know, it's just a matter of how we, we have to get these things done. You know, you can't be offended. You know, when you're being coached up. You know, and I see a very coachable group. You know, which is which is which is good to see. You know, it's really really good to see. That's how you get it. you have a chance to get better. Give us a chance to you know to reach our full potential. You know, out you know out there, but I mean, hey, we're expecting. Like I told these guys today, I said, listen, and we told them yesterday. Look, you, we are going to whatever we've seen on film from these guys. Like we're watching the film, and whatever we've seen, like from their personnel, their film, they're going to be better than that. They're going to be way better than that. They're going to be more intense than that. You know, they're going to be stronger than that. They're going to be faster than that. You know, they're going to be more physical than that. So you know. That's our focus is like, you know, so, so you know, we're expecting, we, we, have to, we have to play our fannies off is what, is, 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 that's our preparation, that's our mindset to, to, to go out there. And, and so we're, we're like practicing, you know, we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not really thinking about all this other stuff, you know. And, and so with, like with the offensive line, like we're trying to get their pads down lower you know, and move people more and be more physical and finish more plays and strain more and run and chase the, the ball and play through the echo of the whistle. You know, that's what we're, what, what we're working to get out of those guys. Because if you can do that in practice, then we can, get it, we can do it in the game. We're trying to make our, our practices harder than what we anticipate the game's going to be, which is the, that's a high bar. That's a high standard. You know, so, we're, you know, we're really in the we're, – we're, we're hunkered down in there and, you know, we're, we're in the weeds. 
you know, right now. With the growth, um, here, <laughs> we've heard about the growth of Peyton Thorne. As a head coach, how reassuring is it to have a guy like that, a leader like that, back just with the experience that he does have already? You know what, you can't win if you don't have a good quarterback. And so, you know, we're very fortunate to have him and have him back and have him as our leader. You know, and he's, he's grown tremendously. And, you know, he's, he's, he's grown into, into the role of a leader and he's developed as a, as a, good, as a good player. You know, and, and so, you know, that's, you know, that's, a, that's, that's what you need. You know, your, your quarterback has to be your number one competitor, you know, on, bar none. I mean, it can't, be any, it can't be any discrepancy about that. And so he is that. There's no one that's going to outcompete him. You know, and, and he cares, um, and so and, and he's he's leading, not just you know leading by example is not really leading. You know, that's just you know that's just the cost of admission. That's just doing your job. But you know, he actually has influence, you know, over his teammates, and and and, and I trust and I trust him, and, and the coaches do. You know, so I mean, to have a guy like that to to be your leader and 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 it is a good thing. You know, it's it's a it's a very good thing. And if you don't have a guy like that, it makes it hard uh, to to even win a, and win. Any game, any time. Hey, Mel, over to left. Two, two parter, I guess. Um, in terms of game day operation, any changes this year for you with the coaches? In terms of for me, uh, in terms of who's upstairs, who's on the sideline, things like that. Yeah, we'll have to see about that. I mean, we have a we have a process, you know, and you know, they, there's rules about who can be on the headsets and who can be up, who can be down, and all that stuff. So, you know, but it, there's nothing. Uh, I mean, there, there's no real news there. Um, and then you talked about continuity of the staff and the importance of that earlier in camp and speed of trust, et cetera. Um, I'm wondering, where do, you, where do you think that hopefully, in your mind, shows up on the field when the lights come on? Well, it's, it's important that the players don't see anything different from us than they see every day in practice. You know. How do you, how do you think it helps to have that continuity? Well, I mean, you, well, just from like from an operation standpoint, you know, uh, guys know you know what their role is on game day, and you know what the expectations are, you know, in terms of the communication and our demeanor and our behavior, you know, pre-game, you know, halftime, you know, during the game on the sideline, you know, how we coach our players, you know, how we make adjustment, you know, adjustments, you know, when do you when do you allowed to talk and when are you like we don't you can't have chaos on the headsets you can't have you know a guy that thinks he's Brent Musburger and he's going to commentate the game you know while the game's being played and the coordinator can't make the call and can't get the down and distance can't get the hash can't get the personnel because this guy you know he's, he's out of his mind you know watching the game we've all had some we've all had some we've all had our Brent, Brent Musburger moments you know you know I mean, you know, stuff happens, and guys are like, oh my God, look, he's wide open. What, what, is, you know? We don't need that right now. Give us the down and distance. Give us the hash. Give us the personnel so we can make the call. Next play, you know. Were you guilty of that too at times? Never, never, <laughs> never, never. Calm, cool, and collected, just like I am in the press conferences. Well, Mel, man, I feel like it's hard to follow this up, but uh, I wanted to ask. You know, a little bit about your relationship, you know, with, with Scotty Hazelton. I know, you know, he came in here two and a half years ago, real kind of odd circumstances in terms of he was the last member of your staff that you hired at the time. And I know you guys had never worked together before. So, so what has it been like these last two and a half years getting to know him and, and work yeah. with him? Yep. It's always good to hear that Southern, uh, that Southern drawl a little bit. Well, well, th well, thank you. Tom Izzo had to comment on it too. So yeah, I just yeah. feel like all the coaches need to yeah. denote it. At some yeah, point. no doubt, no doubt. Scotty's, Scotty's a great football coach. And he's a he's a he's a he's a great man, and he he uh, he's a good staff guy, you know. He's he's a good colleague. He's a good teammate, you know. And he cares, you know, about the players and about his staff. You know, the the, the guys around him, the support staff. He treats everyone like a million bucks, you know. Um, and uh, re regardless of you know what your your title is and things like that, um, and uh, and he he he's a hard worker. You know, he's a bootstrapping guy. Uh, he believes in, you know, roll your sleeves up, hard work. He's attention to detail, you know, no stone unturned type guy. He brings a tremendous amount of energy, like, every single day. And, you know, he live and dies with the, with the players, you know. And that's, I mean, you know, it's, that's, and, he, and he's smart. The guy's, the guy's like, his, his intelligence is, like, through the roof. 
and he, and he, and he works and, and he's humble and hardworking, you know, with that. So, I mean, he's a, and he's a good teacher um, and, and, and the guy has a lot of experience. I mean, you know, and in, in this game, you know, in order to, 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 I think, to be able to coach at a high, high level, you have to have your butt kicked a few times, you know. And so when you have experience, you know, uh, like we've all had, you know, um, you know, on the staff, when, you, when you, you've been places and you've been on different staffs and you've seen a lot of stuff, college and pro, whatever, you know, you've, you've you know, had, had, your, had your butt handed to you a couple of times and then you have some success, you know, it, it puts you in a position to, to be able to coach these young guys, you know, and, uh, you know, through, through everything, you know, and be able to lead. And, and that's what he is. He's a leader. I wanted to kind of pick, you know, what you've seen about Western um, on tape, particularly two guys, the, the quarterback, Salopec, there was a couple games he got in, obviously, at the pick game a little bit. And then also Ladarius Jefferson, who's been in this building and played here, and what that means for maybe a, a mid-level team coming in to try and pull an upset. You know, I don't want to put, I don't want to put words in their mind. I don't know what they're thinking. You know, just my experience. But my experience tells me in games like this, this game has been circled on their schedule for quite some time. You know, and, and whatever they've, we've seen from them on tape, they're going to be better than that, you know. And they're, they're absolutely, their belief factor is like through the roof right now. You know, their coaching staff has those guys, you know, ready, prepared, and believing that they can come in here and, 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 and beat us, you know. So that's what we're preparing for, you know. And, and, you know, we've got coaches and we've got players and, and you know, and, 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 you know, we have work to do. And, and, but, you know, it's, it, that's what we're anticipating. That, I mean, it's not, it, that's just what it's going to be. You know, so we, we know that. And, and, and that's why we, gotta, we have to stay focused on what we got to get done today. You know, we can't be, you know, uh, thinking about, you know, Friday night right now on a Tuesday. And say, but it's a Monday, but this is a Tuesday for us, right? You know? But we, we know, and that's why we have to continue to build our fight, you know, so that we can start fast and so that we can play relentless, you know, Michigan State football for 60 minutes, you know, in the game, you know, play in and play out, you know, six seconds of play. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you next time. Really appreciate you. Thank you.